This viscast will use the relationship between electric field and electric potential difference to calculate an electric field. Let's begin by interpreting what this question is about. We've got some information here about a system of parallel plates, two parallel plates. We know about the area and the separation, and they've got a 20 volt potential difference applied across them. And we're being asked to calculate the electric field between the plates. So importantly here, we need to be thinking about the relationship between the electric field and some potential difference. And the first thing we can see when we write those down is that one of them is a vector and one of them is a scalar. So we'll have to be taking that into account in our solution. Moving on to the development stage, let's have a diagram here. Maybe not terribly well to scale because this plate has a certain area and a certain distance between them. And I haven't really followed this. If this is 7.6 square centimeters, the area, then it looks like maybe my distance of 1.8 millimeters between them is not perhaps exactly to scale. And there's a potential difference between here as well. And that potential difference, we're told, is 20 volts. Now I can try to think about the electric field here between these two plates by thinking about what a test charge would do if I placed it between these plates. One of the things we know about parallel plates, the symmetry that we have between these charged parallel plates, is that any charge, any test charge that I placed in here would feel a force directly across to the opposite plate, uh, kind of parallel to the line joining the two plates. So if I placed it, so if this was, you probably need to think about, let's make this plate here the high potential plate and this plate here the low potential plate. And there's 20 volts between those two. If I placed a test charge at the high potential plate, it would feel a force across to the low potential plate. Remember, electric potential here is potential energy per unit charge. So the high and low potential in a gravitational analogy is a little bit like this is the high side of the hill, this is the low side of a hill, and an object placed there will move in the absence of anything else happening, will uh, we'll feel an acceleration down the hill. And that's the same thing that would happen for a positive test charge. So that tells us, knowing that the electric field is simply a force per unit charge, on some positive test charge there, that our electric field must point from one plate to the high potential plate across to the low potential plate uh, in a manner like that. And the other thing that we know, if we can ignore end effects, is this field will be uniform. It obviously gets a little bit more complicated towards the end of the plates, but we're going to ignore that. And it doesn't matter how close I am to either plate, the field strength doesn't vary as you move in the space between the plates. So the symmetry and the understanding of this situation helps us a lot in terms of the vector nature of this electric field. We can understand the directional and uniform nature of that electric field. We don't know the size of the force for a particular test charge going on here. That's not information that we have. So this might not be the most useful way of calculating what the size of that electric field is. We do have the potential difference. And what do we know about the relationship between electric potential and electric field? Well, we know that the change in electric potential is really telling us the work done per unit charge if we moved a test charge in that field. And we can write that as the negative of the integral of the electric field dotted into some displacement change. And because we can deal in just one dimension here, I'll make that just dx. If we were dealing in, in a more complicated symmetry, we might make that dr. And dr might actually have an x and y and z component in rectangular coordinates. But here, we'll just decide that x is in the direction of interest of this field. So that's my relationship between a potential difference and an electric field. The change in potential has to do with the negative of the work done, uh, moving a test charge through that electric field. So this should enable us to move to our evaluation stage here. Um, a few things I need to take into account. What do I know about delta V, the change in potential? Well, I know that it will be my final minus my initial. I need to think about what path I'm going to integrate my electric field along. I've said I'm going to make it go only in the x direction. That's I can choose any path because the electric field is describing a conservative force. And so the change in potential energy 
is independent of the path. In fact, the change in potential here is independent of the path. And I'll deliberately choose, as I've shown here, a path that goes parallel to the field. And I'd make that, for example, my initial location and that my final location. If I do that, you can see that my final minus my initial will actually be my, in this case, my low potential minus my high potential. And that will be, in this case, minus 20 volts. That sign's quite important. I need to keep track of that sign. There's a negative sign up here in my relationship between potential and the work done uh, in the electric field. So I need to make sure I keep track of the signs of everything else. So if I'm moving as I've indicated there, I'll actually be having a, a negative change in potential, going from high potential to low potential. The other thing to consider is this uh, calculation in the integral itself, this, this summation of, of e dot dx. So e dot dx, remember dx here is a little unit of distance that I'm moving along as I go along the whole path. If I choose the path that I've indicated there, I can simply write that as e dx because I've chosen a path where my field is parallel to the unit of my path. That's kind of simple. I've, I've taken into account the vector nature by simplifying and, uh, and, and, and using the symmetry at hand. And then if I want to think about the integral of this, I can actually take that electric field outside of the integral because my electric field is constant between the plates. Another useful uh, step to take in this solution here. So now my change in potential will equal minus e the integral dx. And remember I'm going here from x initial to x final. So that's going to equal, uh, and that's an easy integral to do. That's, uh, if I integrate dx between xf and xi, I simply get xf minus xi. That's, that's that integral done. And we know what xf minus xi is. It's this distance d, the separation of the plate. So this is minus e times d. And you might have already recalled that for a uniform electric field, the potential difference uh, is simply the electric field multiplied by how far you've moved parallel to that field. So making a bit more space here, we can now rearrange this. The electric field is what we're looking for. The electric field here will equal minus delta V, the potential difference over the separation of the plates. That's minus minus 20 volts. Remember our potential difference was negative. Uh, divided by 1.8 millimeters. That's in SI units now in meters. And if I do that calculation, I come up with a number like 1.11 times 10 to the power of 4. This is an electric field, so the units will be in force per charge. So I can write that as Newtons per Coulomb, and there's my answer.